Good evening, class. Let's uh, continue with our lecture uh, this evening. This is our um, third of uh, the sixth series of lecture, and we are now in module uh, module four. Uh, the last uh, module that we will discuss will be on will be module uh, seven. So that uh, between this time until next month, we'll be able to finish the lecture on uh, uh, management 102 or agribusiness management. Now, after this lecture, I will be giving you the uh, long exam, the first long exam, so that uh, uh, after that uh, long exam, then we will have a series of lecture again. Now, please take note that as I have announced uh, last meeting or the other last year, actually, we will have a we will have an the the, the modality of our uh, meeting will be asynchronous. Yeah. So that means to say, I will be uh, uploading the live uh, recorded lecture, and then uh, you just go to my model classroom, and then. Uh, I'll get your feedback if you have anything uh, you want to uh, learn more or any any question about the lecture. I'll, I'll get you there at our group chat in this uh, particular course. That uh, the uh, the schedule of the lecture will, since it is asynchronous, you will have to access the lecture material at your own pace. No, so that uh, any time within the week. I'll, I'll upload this tomorrow after after this will be processed by YouTube and then I'm ready for uploading by tomorrow morning then uh, two days after that I might also be able to uh, again upload another lecture and as I said you access that according to your own convenience so uh, uh, I hope that uh, those who haven't really attended most of the lectures that I'm, I was giving last year which was uh, done in a synchronous manner would be able to really get this lecture downloaded because it's now uh, accessible according to your own convenience so that uh, as i have said you just visit my uh, youtube uh, channel or the model classroom which is the facility to upload my youtube channel and be able to hear the lecture on screen no? So uh, this lecture will be will uh, uh, spread us out in terms of the whole length of a very important uh, subsystem in agribusiness, that is the production subsystem. Now, this lecture is uh, really divided into, uh, say, uh, three segments, if I may uh, just describe it. The first segment is... Uh, dealing with a just a quick overview of the philippine agriculture and particularly uh, the uh, production say uh, the, the production capability in terms of available arable land you know, in the philippines and then down the line we uh, discuss also on uh, what's what's the agribusiness system is all about and then uh, the agribusiness system will also deal with specific topic on production and then after a while the uh, uh, lecture also will further cascade into the the uh, the various problems in the production subsystems of the philippine agribusiness no so uh, this time we will be talking about these three different segments of the production subsystems in agribusiness and then uh Hopefully, this will also get you become familiar of uh, the uh, the nature and the, also the structure of the production subsystem of the Philippine agribusiness. So, um, at the end of the class, at the end of the course, or at the end of this particular lecture, you will be able to get yourself familiar not only of the uh, uh, the production subsystem, but its role in terms of the uh, connection with other subsystems in agribusiness, no? So uh, with that note, I would like to start the lecture 
the, uh, formally and get into the real core of the, what needs to be learned in this particular module. Now, the Philippines, if we look at uh, the map of the Philippines, is actually a, a well-spread archipelago from north to south, and it's divided into various islands. Now, its islands have cap has uh, capability of producing something, but there are also difficulties and also there are, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, specifics, adaptability of certain crops and commodities that needs to be planted in a certain location. Because from north to south, it's also divided according to the various climatic uh, conditions. We have four types of climatic conditions in the Philippines. Uh, type 1, Type 2, Type 3, and Type 4. Now, incidentally, our uh, our Eastern Visayas is classified under Type 2 climatic, uh, uh, climatic divisions so that we have a well-spread rainy season and a very wet, uh, a very wet rainy season at that, but not so uh, dry, dry season actually. Not like in the northern part of the Philippines, in Luzon, where you will have a very distinct dry season and a very distinct rainy season. So that's those are just some of the variations in terms of climatic uh, distributions in the entire country. Now, the Philippines also is composed of uh, 30 million hectares, but not all of these 30 million hectares are uh, suitable for agriculture. So I will show you in a short while what are the divisions and uh, the the uh, uh, allocations of these 30 million hectares comprising the Philippine archipelago. Now, the agribusiness uh, production subsystem, uh, it's, it's the core of agribusiness uh, system. In other words, everything uh, really, the, if we consider this as the hub of all, all subsystems in agribusiness, because in one, in one, in one hand, it's it's actually the the main market for uh, the main buyer of like, for example, the input from the input subsystem, but it's also the provider of raw materials and uh, fresh uh, products from agriculture. If we look at the downstream or the connection from marketing to to processing subsystem. So in other words, everything is really uh, dependent upon this uh, particular subsystem, its production. No, Now, production, uh, if we may call it, or generally defined as a transformation process where resources are combined to produce a specific product at specific quality or specific schedule. Now, when we say resources, what are these resources? When we combine these resources, to produce a certain product or a specific uh, quality of product, we mean, what are these resources? We mean land, farm inputs, labor, and other resources, or you may call it entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial skills or management uh, skills. No? So when we say production, there is transformation, and the transformation involves combination of resources to produce a specific quality products. Now. What are the elements of production system? What are the elements if we uh, say this is agribusiness production subsystem? The efficient production subsystem is affected by the following important elements. One is market orientation. You cannot, in from the perspective of agribusiness, you cannot produce something in agribusiness, if we may call it agribusiness, something if there is no market. Otherwise, if, if there is no market and you're producing that for uh, producing that for household consumption, it's not agribusiness yet. Because when we say agribusiness, there is business. And when there is business, in other words, your production activity must produce enough surplus for the market. Huh? So that is, there is market orientation. Another important element is location. When you when you produce something, it, sh it should not only be market oriented, but how far is it from the market? How accessible it is from the market? and things like that, no? Location is very important also. Now, another uh, another very important element is access to, uh, to the right technology. Now, of course, you produce something, you use a certain uh, production processes. You use, you use a certain technique in being able to produce competitively. Hence, you need the right technology. And then the other element is availability of resources. Of course, you produce something, with the assumption that all the other resources, of course, in the first place, you have land where you are going to use for, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, planting and you also have the source of water you also have the source of what uh, irrigation water and of course the the source of other inputs like uh, planting materials or something like that now very importantly when you do uh, production in an agri in the, in, the product, in this production subsystems in agribusiness it is also assumed that you have the management capability and you have the system to start with in other words you can organize the production activity more efficiently otherwise if you don't have any system forget about doing agribusiness no? because agribusiness is all about producing surplus for the market it's not just producing uh, food to eat for the household otherwise it's not as we have said it's just subsistence farming it's not agribusiness yet okay so that these are the elements of a uh, uh, an effective production subsystem yeah, as i repeat market orientation location and then you have also uh, access to the right technology and then timely and availability of resources and of course as we have said management system if i may emphasize further on management system when we say management in other words you organize your farm in a way that matches the key areas of operation of a business now, what are the key areas of operation in a business you have marketing production finance and human resource okay so you you cannot just say uh, you're managing something but you're not including market you're not including uh, finance okay baka mamaya ang farm ang imong farm operation puno sa utang after after a while after producing something all goes to the payment of debts no profit at all and that's a wrong agribusiness no now and then you have human resources you can, you intend to employ people to help you out in the production activities that is management system in a production subsystems in agribusiness no now when we produce something we also not only produce profitably but we also produce sustainably okay so it's it's a very important consideration that when you produce profitably you are competitive okay competitively competitive production but not only that you don't only produce for profit but you also produce that also that also results in a in a uh, judicious respect to the environment that is producing sustainably okay producing sustainably now how do we do that okay we produce something that is of quality the enterprise must be able to deliver the immediate and immediate and immediate or final customers at agreed minimum volume you know? and then it's also viable and then season season to season and is uh, a production system that is diverse in other words no diverse so that you can preserve the natural balance of the ecosystem without compromising on being able to gain profit no now another uh, consideration of a sustainable and competitive enterprise competitive enterprise or agribusiness subsystems or agribusiness production system is quality okay you being able not only produce in volume but you also produce quality product okay quality requirements of of the buyers and the processors also that you are actually selling your products which adheres to the to the specific requirements of your market and of course specific requirements of the environment no so that is sustainable and profitable uh, production enterprise and then another measure of sustainable and competitive uh, production enterprise will be price and cost no? if you say competitive with respect to price you are able to compete your what your your compete with your competitor because after all if you say competitive what is the what is the most obvious measure of uh, being competitive or competitiveness the, the very obvious measure is when you say competitive you are able to outsell your competitor in other words if your competitor can sell 100 kilograms you can sell actually more than 100 150 or 200 kilograms or any volume above 100 kilograms that means more cost you have more customers than your competitor then you are competitive okay competitive in terms of price and competitive in terms of cost the cost 
and very important if you are competitive you can produce that same volume of products at a minimum or much lower cost of production okay so products sold must be price or cost competitive in in a word in other words relative to your suppliers okay so that's that's really a very important consideration when we say sustainable and competitive um, production or uh, uh, yeah production uh, uh, subsystem another measure of sustainable and competitive uh, production subsystem would be service delivery you see the service delivery uh, differentiates you're being able to end to penetrate the market then also you're being able to produce something because if you are if your service delivery is good enough or even excellent than your competitor now you can uh, again outsell your competitor using the same or in the same particular platform market marketing platform no maybe um okay cause, uh, uh, pre pre sale i know uh, practice meaning to say you can easily uh, convince your customer but you could also be good in after sales uh, you know uh, service to your customer so enterprise must be able to respond to the needs of the buyers in terms of reliability or good feedback uh, system okay so that is that, that those are the considerations of what we call as a a responsive or competitive and not only that sustainable uh, production uh, subsystems in agribusiness now we have already discussed on production subsystem the meaning in other words there is production activity going on and that production is activity is market oriented and also uh, situated in an uh, excellent location and able to serve its customer well and also it exceeds the expectations of the market now the other thing is we need to, to become familiar about the philippine farms okay the philippine farms when we say the Philippine farms, on some that, no? Now, on the Philippine farms, or the Philippines, actually, as we have, as I have been mentioned a while ago, it's it's actually uh, composed of three hundred thousand square kilometers, or in hectares, it's composed of uh, thirty million hectares. Now, that is the total land area. But when it comes to allocation, there are various. Dis uh, there is a distribution to that. You have agricultural land area agricultural land area is only 9 million because most of the 30 million hectares are actually forest and non-arable areas okay protected forest and also like uh, mountainous areas which is not suited for uh, planting of uh, any or domestication of any livestock or even planting of any particular crops now the 9 million arable agricultural area million actually it is only composed of 4.9 million hectares of arable land okay when we say uh, arable land well, of course fitted for cultivation now this 4.9 million is also uh, planted with permanent crop uh, composing of like uh, uh, 4.2 million hectares now and there is also in this in this one in this 30 million hectares the sizable uh, sizable uh, uh, area also devoted for meadows and pastures it's about 0.3 million hectares and then you have 0.74 forest lands 0 0.074 uh, forest he uh, hectares million hectares rather for forest reserve now so you can see that there is only like less than 50 percent of the uh, area in the philippines actually 9 million out of 930 million only nine or say for example 10 million so that's only one third of the land area that is arable and that one third only 50 percent is really also suited for agricultural uh, cultivation no? uh, so that means to say uh, uh, it's, it's not really that big in terms of land area available for cultivation and there another overlay to that would be a huge number also a huge 
proportion of the land area for cultivation has already been encroached by various land uses like for example uh, people construct houses and paddy fields people what uh, uh, reclaim land agriculture area for uh, putting up of, like buildings and uh, roads etc so in other words the real the, in, in real sense it's actually not exactly 4.9 million it could be 3 million already this time because a lot of it has been used for like uh, encroached by human settlement okay and that's only that out of this 4.9 million, less than 50% is, or yeah, 50% 50, 50 is irrigated. So we are left with a challenge in terms of being able to produce considerable amount of production with a very limited area. Or we are faced with a situation where there is a huge challenge in terms of being able to increase production by providing irrigation. Because less than 50 percent of that area is irrigated okay so at least by that figure you can already somehow uh visualize in your imagination that arable land that produces food and staple food feed and fiber for the population is not that big at all okay it's not that big at all so we are really uh, facing a situation where our area is getting smaller and smaller, but our population is getting bigger and bigger. No? So that's really one very important uh, concern, in not only for uh, subsistence agriculture, but basically for agribusiness. No? Now, this arable land is composed of various farms also, fragments of the different land holdings we call farms. What do we mean by farm? What do we mean by how do we define a farm? From our references, a farm is any piece or pieces of land having a total area of 1,000 square meters. Akala ninyo nga moingon tag farm, dako nung kaayo. No. A farm, a minimum of 1,000 square meters only, used wholly or partly for growing crops such as palay, corn, fruits, vegetables, and also for tending livestock and poultry. Now, regardless of number or any land, regardless of area, used for raising chicken, at least 20 heads. Kanang 20 heads of chicken? Kana na? Kanang, le, kanang 20 heads of, no, 20 heads, 100 heads of chicken or poultry? Farm na na, 100 heads. And then also, if you have cattle, if you have, I know, if you have like uh, carabao or these large animals, 20 heads is already considered by definition a farm, no? 20 heads. So below that, muragkuan pa na siya. Backyard uh, agriculture pa na siya. Di pa gina makonsider nga mga farm, no? So, uh, th this are, th this is the range of, oh, these are the range of definitions when it comes to like uh, uh, a piece of property or land area considered to be a farm by definition, no? So, pilay requirement, anong fruit, mga for planting of crops, at least 1,000 square meters. So I know that your father or your lolo or your uncle is cultivating like more than 1,000 square meters in, in many instances. That's already a farm. No? And then, but if you are raising livestock for livestock, large animals, 20 heads minimum. And then for poultry or chicken or ducks, you have at least 100 heads. Farm na siya. Bisagwa kay yuta, nalang kay gamay nga matugwaya na na nila, no? So that's the definition. We better make a profitable management of whatever uh, scale of farm operations we are doing. No? Now, a farm also can be planted by, can be planted into or can be planted with temporary crops. What do you mean by temporary crops? Crops that are grown seasonally. Because growing cycle is less, is less than one year. Ganang bago ba in one year. Uh, mga temporary crops na vegetable or even rice is a temporary crop uh, beans is a temporary crop etc basta kaya ang production cycle niya less than one year uh, but that means from planting to harvesting less than one year na no so it's a temporary uh, crops no and planted again for production after each harvest now and there's also what we call as permanent crops 
Now, permanent crops are crops that are that occupy the land for a period of time and do not need to be replaced after its after harvest, like coconut. Pag tanom ni mo, wala na siya. Sige na ka, paabot na lang ako sa mag-harvest. And then, harvest ka until several years, several decades. Abaka. Okay? If I will give you a, for example, a selection, abaka, pechay, like uh, coconut, um, 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 magpiling de blanks ta, permanent crops ba na, o sumanan siya, kanam temporary crops, you'd be able to answer that. No? Okay. Yung kag permanent, permanent, yun na, kaya abin ninyo, ang abaka. Abaka is, is abaka a permanent crop or temporary crop? Maybe you have a, a different uh, understanding when it comes to abaka. Abaka is more permanent than banana, no? Because banana, labi nag-backyard after harvest or not. Banana, itlon mo na. Pero abaka is different. Abaka can go in one century. No, na ay mga abaka farm din sa Leite nga, gi-interview na mo sa research, 75 years old na ang ilang abaka plantation. It needs rejuvenation or improvement ba? Because they have inherited that property from lolo, mga ano nila, ancestors. Very, ano na, old na, but still very productive. No? And there are other, mga fruit trees, these are permanent crops. No? Now, now in, the, in terms of land area of utilization in the Philippines, 32% of the country's total land area is agricultural land. Katong ganina, kung ingin sa inyo nga, uh, katong na ay mga 9,000 kapi, no? Uh, kung gina, ang, ang, ang kwana na is uh, 32% of the total land area of, agri of agricultural land. Of this, kung ingin ganina, 50% rapon ana ang arabol, no? And planted to permanent crops, no? So, gabay lang yun, yung arabol, pero di pag irrigated, Less than 50% pag yun of the arable area are irrigated. No? By, if, we, if we look at distribution of agricultural, uh, uh, say for example, activities in terms of employment by, by gender or by sex, we have 75% in agriculture are predominantly males, male population. Only 25% are females. No? So, as an imong tanaw na, be, the, it can really go in that uh, in that way, probably because uh, agricultural work or agricultural worker or workers rather are really bent on uh, using like, what kanibang uh, masculine power, no? In Hanglan nga uh, uh, not like in other countries where ang magdaro ang ato din magdaro mga lalaki, no? Pero magdaro in other countries are women. Because ilang gigamit tractor, air condition man. Sulod rana nga, no? mag-fertilize, mag-harvest. Pwede ang women. Sa so, ato, manumano mo na. No? We, 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 we cannot do that because our land also, the scale of operation do not permit that capital-intensive operation. No? So, the number and size of farms in the Philippines, we have in, in uh, 2005 to 2010, you have 9.7 million. No? Now, uh, ang, ang farm size uh, distribution really has uh, gone smaller and smaller. No? Now, uh, farm size uh, in the Philippines has also declined over the years. Before, it was more than one hectare. Karon, it's, it's a little less than one, one hectare, actually. But it's still a farm because a farm defines 1,000 square meters planted to various crops. No? Farm kaya po na siya. Only nga, nagka-decrease ang size. You cannot approach agribusiness with land extensification, meaning to say, in, in increasing the land area. You can only approach agribusiness nowadays by land intensification. You intensify the use of whatever area of property you are having. No? That means you maximize the use of technology in order to produce something more, say, uh, useful for, uh, say, agribusiness production. Now, in the in the, before it was uh, more than uh, even two hectares, but this time it's already uh, less than two hectares, no, less than one hectare, in fact, in, in the, the recent statistics. Now, in the reduction in the average farm size could be attributed to 
uh, various things. One is application or uh, implementation of the comprehensive land reform, no? where the huge farm, huge tracts of land owned by the haciendas or hacienderos were subdivided for like uh, to be distributed to small farmers. And it's now turning into a cooperative uh, uh, cooperative venture of uh, uh, land smallholder farmers where they cultivate huge tracts of land as a cooperative. You know? They have, they pull together their land holdings and operate that uh, like uh, cooperatively. You know? Now, crops and animal produce in, in, agri in agri agricultural production, in agribusiness, you have, well, Pala is the major temporary crops in, in agribusiness, in agriculture. Major temporary crop. And coconut is also the dominant permanent crop in the Philippine agriculture. That's why when you when you browse through uh, the landscape of the Philippine uh, Philippine uh, the Philippine landscape from north to south, you can see predominantly coconut cocoa land, no? cocoa land, and of course rice as temporary crops. Now, crops and animal produce also in the Philippine agriculture. You have chicken is the prevalent poultry. Uh, accounting for 3.5 3.5 uh, million heads or 3.5 million uh, farms no? small farms in poultry small poultry farms major livestock uh, domesticated hog is the largest among them no? we, we produce sizable portion of like uh, swine in the Philippines but an but also, uh, while we produce like 2.1 million, like uh, million farms, or 2.5 producing about uh, several millions of kilograms of uh, pork, but when you talk about our consumption, it's still very small because it's not enough for our consumption. What we produce in terms of uh, hugs, it's not enough for our domestic consumption we import actually a lot of uh, uh, pork in other from other countries because our uh, our hog industry is not able to meet the demand of our local uh, consumption now we also produce ornamentals or flower flowering plants no? about 42000 uh, ornamental uh, say 42000 ornamental enterprise operators now, talking about the, the various types of uh, land, permanent, of various types of farm, permanent, and also temporary, we also look at the Philippine farms by legal status, okay, by legal status or tenure status. So, uh, legal status refers to the farm organization under which the agricultural operation is undertaken. No? The legal status uh, referring to the the farm organization under which the agricultural operation is undertaken. First is classification of Philippine farms according to legal status. We have individual farms. Refers to farms operated by various persons or various by a person who may be the farmer, owner, or lessee or a tenant. No? So put in an individual farms on as a classification. We also have what? Corporation or corporate farm. This is these are these are farms operated by a corporation. Okay, they own a huge tract of land, operated it as corporate enterprise. Okay, either uh, individual farm operated by private person singly. We also have a corporation, and we do have partnership also. So classification of Philippine farms by legal status. There is partnership, meaning to say. Few people combine the resources together and operate a certain uh, farming activities or farming enterprise. Now that is partnership. Aside from that, we also have cooperative farms. No? As I have mentioned a while ago, uh, people with uh, different uh, what different sizes of land holdings, they pull the resources together and form a cooperative and operate the farm activities as a cooperative. Also, there are successful production cooperatives already uh, surviving in the in the country in fact in Mindoro they have a, a good uh, they have the best practice in 
uh, profitably surviving cooperatives that are uh, cooperatives that are producing like uh, high value crops either spices or cereals or what have you no? these are the cooperatives that has uh, gone through uh, a uh, very uh, rich experience in in farming activities in production operation in agribusiness no? so not only it is operated singly by a local by individual person corporation a partnership or it can also be operated by a cooperative but it can also be run by public funds by the government in other words the government can can also operate their own farms no there are many uh, uh farms also operated by the government that refers to the the ownership of the farm by an organization owned and operated by the government okay it's provided by law there are uh really uh viable say uh, farming operations that are run by uh, the government and of course providing like what like uh, the necessary say uh, um, say uh, the necessary uh, inputs or even providing the necessary benefits for uh, for example government employees okay government employees for example a, a state university state colleges and universities there are farms also in their economic enterprise producing something for the benefit of the employees there are uh, for example state universities in, in luzon and even in the mindanao they produce rice for uh, the faculty members and uh, workers in the university pro selling it at a very cheap price helping the employees in other words no or there are other crops planted by uh, government institutions for the benefit of its constituents another is uh, by legal status it can also be private institutions it, can on, it cannot only be government but there are also private institutions for example NGOs running a specific farm uh, for the specific purpose of really demonstrating a particular business model to uh, uh, really also address certain needs of the market and of course they have what we call as uh, people around them that also benefit in terms of the technology that they are using no? this definition includes other organization private private institution could mean other organizations not covered by above mentioned categories no? like delicia corporation they put cooperative they put it could be just a po or private institutions or it could just be a uh, uh, private institutions that are uh, that uh, going to demonstrate something for uh, the so for example a certain technology to be introduced in a particular location basically ngos no now we we are we are done with different like classifications of philippine farms according to legal status we, we also uh, farms or farm production or classification of farms according to arrangement no? production arrangement uh, it means to say uh, certain kind of arrangement or structure operating a particular farm or a huge tracts of land a huge area of farm and then for a certain purpose of um, say for example uh, maximizing the economies of scale in that uh, production activities so one example of uh, say class farm classification of farms according to production arrangement is cooperative farming farming no a cooperative farm is a combination of individually owned farms collectively they pull together organize a production activity and make a decision in terms of farm operation according to the nature of the decision making power of the cooperative which is the the board of directors or the elected board no? they decide the board uh, chooses a, a business manager and the board sets the guidelines on how to operate the farm the cooperative what is the difference between a cooperative and a corporation now in terms of voting power in a cooperative you have one man one vote okay but in a corporation 
you have your voting power depends on your shares of stocks so that means the more stocks you have the more voting power you can have also no so but in a cooperative one man one vote that means dato ka usar you ka kaboto sa policy making no so that's the difference the advantage of cooperative farming is that sharing the sharing of resources is based on uh a, say for example uh based on your presence physical presence you can also optimize land use because you pull together your resources and not only that it also helped uh say for example uh, becoming more profitable as a an enterprise because cooperatives are free are tax free now they don't pay taxes there's a law that no <coughs> so if they're not required to pay taxes <coughs> sorry <coughs> then we can uh, <coughs> the amount of money that is supposed to be paid for taxes will now be plowed back for the shared as a profit no in the in the farm now there is another what well, there's another production arrangement in the in the agribusiness subsystem production subsystem we call the contract drawing <coughs> sorry <coughs> Now the contract growing arrangement <coughs> is an arrangement between two entry entities, no? two entities which specifies several conditions, such as sales and requires contracting firm to provide technical and other services to the production entity. No? It's not entry, no entity, entity. So, in other words. Uh, contract growing the production and marketing arrangement is actually agreed upon by by uh, uh, the contracting entity okay now the contracting entity we call them the first the integrator and you have also the the the, the integrator is the one that buys all your stocks and provides all the inputs and the and the farmer okay and the the grower or the yeah the contract grower the grower binds together with the integrator to form a contract contract growing arrangement now a good example of a contract growing arrangement is in the poultry business okay san miguel or bounty fresh an integrator contracts with a grower a certain farmer and agree in terms of the production and marketing arrangement so that is a good example of contract growing now so far the viable contract growing in the philippines is uh, predominantly concentrated in the poultry industry now there are contract growers in swine industry but not very not very common no? so that is uh, that, that's where we succeed in our contract growing arrangement another like a uh, contract growing uh, uh, or like production arrangement is we call the uh, the marketing uh, no marketing contract marketing but before we go to contract marketing i might as well uh, discuss to you the factors that is responsible in the successful of implementation of contract uh, growing no? one is market orientation so not the market okay the contract growing arrangement cannot succeed well i viable market that's why i'm integrator my no? another is the overall management includes allocation of all inputs for production okay so in a contract growing an integrator like san miguel pure foods or whatever or whoever already assures inputs and of course assures the market okay dito na tanan inputs of ang market so what the grower do is to really just grow production is the production responsibility of the grower and then also contract growing becomes more attractive if it is a long-term orientation okay because investment to mga farm infrastructure is the responsibility of the grower kadako kayo o kuan dako kayo og 
investment ang farmer. So, it cannot be recovered in just one production cycle. Maybe several production cycles before ma recover ang investment. So that contract growing must have a long-term orientation. Dili na pwede nga. Contract growing ron to iga, sunod to iga na. It's not possible to be that way because of the huge investment involved. No, So, some contract growing arrangements, successful contract growing arrangement in the Philippines, na ay banana, na ay pineapple, na ay asparagus, na ay chicken, more ay poultry, more the most successful. No, Kaling banana, pineapple, and asparagus, two aranis Mindanao. No? Makita na to contract grower ka sa pineapple sa Dole or Del Monte, contract grower ka sa banana sa Del Monte or uh, sa Tadeco or sa Uban Pana Corporation. Asparagus is only located in Cotabato, particularly in areas of the of General Santos and uh, Polomolok area. No? To add ito ang mga asparagus nga uh, favorably growing. No? So, other than that, very uncommon ang contract growing na. No? So, the other type of production arrangement is contract marketing. So, in other words, ang ang integrator is only will only come in during the the marketing of products okay so processors or commercial farms tie up with small farmers the arrangement is that commercial farmers or processors buy the farmers produce in advance or even before they are harvested in other words for example if you are a rambutan farmer or a durian farmer or saka uh, saka nga mango uh, uh, farmer ka no you have several trees like you have about uh, well, about 1000 trees of uh, well um, w uh, good bearing uh, durian or pomelo now dag may panang bunga magsabot na mo og pilay palit no like for example pinun o sa kapunuan like mao pala pagguwa sa bunga nga murag klaro na gyud nga mulahos Sabot na mo. Paliton ako 10,000 kada punuan. Okay? Or paliton ako 6,000 kada punuan. And then you have about 1,000 of them. So, from that agreement until it becomes available or uh, fit for harvesting, ang contract marketer o integrator na mo uh, mo operate niya na. Wala na. Ikural na na. Ilan na na. na. Bayra na kada yun. After completing everything, you'll be uh, paid in full and wala hassle but the only thing is security is very important because sometimes the security part will be uh, will be uh, will be uh, relegated as the responsibility of the grower no or yeah the grower but more often than that ang, ang integrator na security and everything siya na tanang mo ano so mao nang napaman siya gastuhon May judi gid kaayo bara di pod kaayo mahal pod ang iyang palit ng gasto pa man siya no? So it's contract marketing Contract marketing an advantage is shared production risk and make sure market Disadvantage niya pod farmers cannot dictate the price because dabong pagunan niya gid palit di nga nagay dabong pa kanang dagmay pag gid kaayo nga bunga no murag uh, igo pa lang siya na form nga bu green pa og rambutan green pa gid na siya Palito na daan, siyempre. You cannot dictate the price. Kasi may palito green ng rambutan. No? So, pagka hantun may yellow or mapuan ng rambutan, mga pila pa na kabuan, mga usa, dua kabuan, mga gasto sa integrator. That's why, palito niya, ang imong tapas punuan nga green pa ng rambutan, barato yun. Like, palito na niya 5,000 kada kuan, kada punuan. But it's good enough because uh, there's still a lot of production risk involved from that point up to the final harvest. And you are free already if you can agree with, a, with an integrator. No? So there are good brands that are doing this. Like, like for example, Kaning Nai Kuan, Kaning Nai Chikita. No? Nakita ka Chikita nga Kuan, Kaning Nai Kanang Nai Tag, din sa fruit. Ang kana nga tag, ibutang na sa uh, pomelo or durian chikita, it is actually an integrator or an integrator of a contract marketing. Piliyon naman po na nilang maayong producer. Okay? Now, 
Ang disadvantage lang po sa contract marketing is that uh, the risk involved sa integrator paying for the product even before it's harvest, no? May advantage siya sa ano, sa buyer for the surety or certainty of supply for the market, siya yung mga corner, no? While developing countries can benefit from corporate, co co corporate farmer, it is no it is not a complete solution for many rural farm problems. This type or this various arrangement cannot solve the problems of unemployment, underemployment, and even hunger, no? It can raise productivity and income of a few favored regions, but not true to all. So this should be implemented on a case-to-case -case basis depending on who gets most of the benefit if it is equitable enough on the part of the farmer then we go for it but if it's not then because surely the integrator would like to get the the largest share of the prof uh, i know the chunk of the profit because they're investing something and the farmer also is uh, faced with a pressure of really being able to uh at least generate a profit for their farm operation so there should be a fair and square agreement between uh the sustainable profit that the farmer wants and of course the profitable margin that the integrator also would like to have you know? so things like that but this is one avenue to explore in order to like minimize the risk of production and also minimize marketing risk depending on can say uh, no, uh, which one is favorable to a particular situation now that's uh one co co contract growing, though, one production arrangement. The cooperative farming and contract growing, uh, it can also be done, say, for example, uh, in parallel. No? Now, there is a cooperative that also do contract growing. Now, and on an individual basis, the problems of farm sector could also be solved by designing marketing strategies. No? Ang, ang problem against the farm sector or uh, production subsystem can be addressed by not necessarily the production arrangement but by designing a good marketing strategies okay because what makes what makes agribusiness agribusiness is that you are being able to really produce profitably and competitively you are producing something surplus for the market but it's not competitive because uh, your production cost is very high no and then before you harvest it cannot you cannot even sold even a single ton of your harvest because your production cost is so high you have to really wait for a very high price in the market so talo ka sa katong very efficient farm no? so being able to penetrate the market the the i know the the games there or the the template there is who gets or who delivers the product at the at the most affordable and good quality say uh, say uh, at, at good quality and affordable price now those are the various arrangements in the farm sector we go to the marketing you no know? production strategy you have various you go into the various arrangements because those arrangements are actually like <coughs> sorry <coughs> those arrangements are actually considered as <coughs> production strategies no? <coughs> because there are two sides of the <coughs> agribusiness marketing i say <coughs> agribusiness uh, <coughs> production subsystem one is the production strategies that you need to do <coughs> and the other one is the marketing strategies also that you need to be able to <coughs> to uh, implement so in terms of marketing strategies the strategies can vary if you are dealing with mass market or if you are dealing with a specific <coughs> like institutional market that's one the other thing is you can also design a strategy 
that is product specific that means to say marketing strategy for fresh product and marketing strategy for processed product so these are uh, two different say directions or two different considerations so let's take into consider take into account the marketing strategy for mass market no for mass market uh, anybody meaning to say pangkalahatan no so what are the different consideration what is a mass market what are the important considerations when you deal with mass market first is maintenance of quality and product freshness so in other words upang pangkalahatan ang imong guitar get quality you know, because in the mass market you have so many competitors <clears throat> then freshness also of your product not only that because you are dealing with mass market the movement or the turnaround cycle must be fast kay lali ra madaot nimo product ya kay mass market man wa man kay one na fresh man imong product <clears throat> and then strengthening also of relationship with existing buyers or <clears throat> de developing what we call a soki arrangement no that is mass market now if you can do that then of course you get a little bit or uh, you get a little bit of success in being able to penetrate the mass market <clears throat> now in the mass market it's not a uh, high volume like for example you are selling vegetable into mass market it's not high volume because uh, when you deal with high volume you are actually uh, you will also you are you will actually run the risk of <clears throat> having to have high post harvest losses or you having to have high percentage of spoilage so that is something that you need to consider just like for example in this one in this picture selling to mass market the very important thing is quality and freshness <clears throat> <clears throat> Pag malanda na na imong vegetable, it's no longer attractive to customers. Okay? Just like also that one, this uh, meat market. So, very important, uh, it should be fresh looking. <clears throat> the moment it's not sold, that day, you will, you will run a problem, you, you will uh, encounter a problem of storage already. That's why, <clears throat> Even this time, selling meat products, it's more customer uh, friendly or it's more strategic to sell or to buy products that are perishable, especially for meat products in meat shops. Because the temperature there is well maintained. Ugaraka sa wheat market, pagkahapon na wala na, iba na ang and um, quality of meat that you are buying no? now that is mark, mas, ma, 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 say, ma, marketing strategies for <coughs> marketing strategies for mass market now there is another strategies oh there are there is another strategy in marketing for institutional buyers okay who are these institutional buyers like hotels restaurants and hris other institutional buyers no hotels restaurants and other institutional buyers now what's important consideration for marketing strategies in the institutional buyers quality and freshness and very importantly on time and delivery or when on sila nga eight o'clock nananas amo eight o'clock din ka and then packaging also is very important and branding and really packing packing it in a way by which it is convenient for the buyers to handle no whether it is vegetable or fresh meat or fish whatever there should be quality on time delivery and well packaged and traceable brand name or brand quality very important na sa institutional buyers now just like this one 
Oh, you can see all this even vegetable nakapak na nakabarcode pa, no? So magbaligya ka sa luyot nakapak na nakabarcode pa or kanang naay sari-sari ng for salad vegetable nakasunod na sa small plastic. <coughs> nakabarcode na may ano na. My name na sa like supplier or uh, imo imo business enterprise, no? That one also selling root crops pero naka balot na sa kanang na ay uh, recyclable cartoons or boxes, no? Of course, mahal mahal na na kaya na nagukay boxes, but the appearance or the 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 position of that in the market is respect respectable enough. To command a better price, no? <coughs> That's why, mga kita ka dito sa mga upscale supermarket na <coughs> ang sweet potato there is a wet market, <coughs> sorry, is sold at like 25 pesos to 30 pesos per kilo. Pero ato ka dito sa upscale nga supermarket, mga department, mga supermarket, yun supermarket, 90 to 120 pesos per kilo. Pero nakabox na. Very selected na ang quality, no? Dito, corridas mo ito, dito sa wet market. Barato na ito, no? Depende, that's the requirement in the institutional buyers. No? Na po yung packaging, vacuum seal, or on sa na siya, with label, it's it's really, ano, an added marketing cost. But there is also an additional price, no? Vacuum seal or vacuum pack nga, nga fish, sa ba na klase ng isda, no? <clears throat> it's vacuum seal, vacuum pack with label and also barcoded. So convenient. Mupunit na lang ganito. Butang sa imong kuan uh, diha, imong cart. Okay kayo. Di na ka maghugaw-hugaw. No? So that is uh, in the institutional market. Bisag uh, kuan na siya, mga ordinary nga isda. Pero naka, naka-pack siya in style for boxes with cling wrap. It appears to be very sanitary. And clean, it commands a better price, and of course there is additional marketing cost. Okay, and it's put in a shelf, supermarket shelves where it's it's very attractive, no? It's very attractive to customer. So like that. Now, so these are the production strategies, marketing strategies. Let's go to the problems and constraints in the farm sector, no? The first problem, actually, we might we might think that as madali lang magkuan, magproduce, or madali lang magiging profitable in the uh, agribusiness uh, production subsystem. Now, it's easier said than done, actually, because the agricultural or agribusiness production subsystem <coughs> is also <coughs> challenged by a lot of problems. One is smallness and fragmentation of operation in my gagmay ragaayo nga operation now in terms of economies of scale talo na sa dako kay na farm no so a the agribusiness production activity in the philippines is predominantly uh, dominated by small farm holdings now with that it's really difficult to be competitive in terms of price because with if you are if your economies of scale is really poor you cannot be competitive because huge farm and well integrated ka farm for example rice na lang daan baka kaya manila <coughs> to produce the same volume at the least cost so, kaya nila mo play around with price in the market. Pero ikaw, naka-lock in imong, imong taas ng production cost, di yung ka maka, maalkansi yung ka, o na ay competition sa presyo. And then, you can only sell also a certain volume. No? So, that's also one problem. Smallness and fragmentation of operation. That's why ang small farms, even ang DA, Karo Department of Agriculture, ang ilang call to, you know, redefine the new thinking of the Department of Agriculture this time is towards clustering of small clustering and integrating of small farms. It's not to say that 
when you cluster, Morag, wala na kay holds yung farm. No, you cluster together with all others, form a maybe a, a cooperative or whatever association you have. Now, the sole objective is to manage together the farms and achieve a certain degree of economies of scale <clears throat> to be more competitive. Because in the market, no, imong talaon ang market, unang una yun is, do you produce quality? Ikaduha, you produce volume or consistency. Kaya nga may rakag farm, karon maka-deliver ka, you cannot sustain. Kung musulod ka sa upscale market, ang upscale market, kanalan imo presence is tractable, uh, consistent. Maka mamaya, mag-deliver ka karon og one ton, sunod si unod buwan, wala na, kay hurot na imong production. They, they, will not, they will not get into production arrangement with you. No? Just like our experience before, ingon tong uh, Gaisano sa Cebu, Metro Gaisano. They have 36 branches in Cebu. Ingon siya. Okay. She became friend already because of our, uh, say, uh, tie up with our vegetable projects in Ormo. Ingon siya, ang purchasing manager yun. Ingon nga, uh, I know that you are producing jackfruit, but ingon siya nga, Tony, you deliver to us 15 tons of jackfruit every other week. No ba? 15 tons. Can you imagine? 15, every other week, every two weeks, we deliver you can 15 tons. Then I said, I think we can try that that ano, ma arrangement. So sa aligran po siya, ako ng contact ng taga mahaplag na ano, na producer. Kaya wak man bye-bye. So ormok ato, murag wak pa po, namunga ilang jackfruit. I contacted the producer, growers, and bye bye, jackfruit. They were able to deliver 25 tons. Gipalit. Hey, kima, mas yung alamik kayo. Nya, pag oh, delivered 25 tons, nakita mi after two months sa tagi akatong mart purchasing manager, na suko sa ako. Ano, suko bang amarag ka na bang suko bang ano sa nanto? Ngayon yung kan na kuan man mi kung na deliver naman tong 25 tons. Day, yeah, yan that's true. Nag deliver 25 tons. Pero wala na'y sunod. Yeah. Kapila naman itong 25 tons. Duhara ka-adlaw na namo. Can you imagine? Duhara ka-adlaw ang 25 tons. Kaya na-atol nga, himalitan yun. Kaya tangis mag yun ang jackfruit na to. But, can you imagine 25 tons, 36 branches throughout Cebu. Ilang deliveran. Dali na kayo naupaw ang imong 25 tons. No? Wala na ganit mag-1 ton ang kada branch. So ang, Gipalit, gip, ang hiwa-iwa, no? gipalit niya. Talaga ka na, hurot, hurot yun, ang 25 tons. Kasi nga, mukuntrata nga ni mo, kinanglan nga consistent. That's why, very important nga, the new thinking of DA is clustering, be able to produce good quality at consistent volume. Kay, mo, kuang, na jodi ha ang, kuang pun, ang ha, more value addition. No? Now, that's fragmentation, problems of agriculture. Another is, another problem sa Philippine uh, production uh, production subsector or agribusiness production subsector is input sourcing problems. Where to get the inputs? Oh, very individualistic ang inyong operation. Ikaw rang usag, may rakag farm. Mahal yung imong inputs palit. Pero if you congregate together and buy in bulk, makabarato ka. No? Kabarado ka. Siyempre, bulk man, buying. Expensive farm inputs, no? Increase in production cost. Of course, kung mahal mong inputs. Or of course, with gamay ka inputs, imong palit ton tungod kay mahal. A low volume and low quality imong produce. It's really a problem. So that's why inyong mga tatay, inyong mga kuwanya, mga uncle na nag going into agribusiness, we have to add, maminaw taan ng new thinking sa DA kanang bagi gi propagate ni uh, secretary William Dar tested na na dito sa India siya ay nakapadato dito sa mga small farmer dito sa kuan Ikrisat Ikrisat is International Center for Tropical Agricultural Research dito sa India na director general siya nya iya nang apply karon sa DA which is comfortable no very workable kay experience baguna niya no so mina that is one avenue by which ma-address na to ng ano, fragmentation and high input cost and other problems actually. No? 
Now another constraint in ano ano in uh, agribusiness uh, production sub system is we call that classical production constraint like farmers lack of control over production conditions of course weather that's why ang kita din sa kuan din sa kana bang na ay mga farmer din sa Leyte for example we are really i would say unfortunately uh, located in a situation where ang atong crops gitanom are photo period sensitive photo well, period sensitive kana bang Kinahalan yun ang nai ample source of sunlight. And yet, ang atong climate do not permit that or does not permit that. Kinda ka mo, init sa muntag, pagkaunto mo, uwan, unya mo, change na po. That is the normal climate that we have. No? Mamurag, wak ka klarong ray, uh, dry season. So, magtanong ka rice, matalo kita sa yield sa Tagaluson na distinct ang ilang dry season. Magtanong ka kamuti, di sa yun, di po ka ayaw dagkog, dagkagunod. Na naman, Kamuti is a photo period sensitive. Mais is a photo period sensitive. Sunlight na itong kontra. So we better position our production in, in a particular crop that meets the, ano, the, uh, si tawag na, kanabang mga climatic conditions. No? So that is one cl classical production. Pero di man lagi na ito ma-change kay gikan sa pagkabata ko, no? nagtanong na hindi ko gumay for consumption, nagunas balay, gamay, ray surplus, ana. Nagkamuti na mi, ana. So, wag yun. Mao naman. Ang imo na lang is challenge the uh, the climatic conditions by really uh, manipulating on the inputs, no? And then napay soil type and pH, no? Ang ato dre kung makaabono tag urea o okay kina, hindi man di ay napay daghan labi nag vegetable, napay daghan mga micronutrient gikananglan sa vegetable. Now, but this time the vegetable production has changed. They are going into kaning gitawag og uh, fertilizing with micro not, micro and macro nutrient. Okay? Dili na ng classical na in PK ra imong yabono. Because in the market, grabe ka ang competition sa kanabang quality, no? The reason why ang atong kamatis o ang atong atsal ibalik ya dito sa supermarket nga. Ma, dako ka difference ang presyo. Ako magig kaayo so we have to go there, but in adto na sa shelves, sa mar supermarket shelves. Matalo ta atong maayo kaayo production practices. Nga naman, after one week, nangunot ng atong atsal. While ang gikan sa China or gikan sa Baguio, Murusina o Baguio kaayo. What could be the explanation there? Ang atong atsal, kuwang o macro, micronutrient, ang ilang gitawag giingon sa mga soil scientists, boron. Nga naman, ang boron, allegedly or accordingly, makapalig on sa cell wall sa tanom sa cell wall sa mga fruits that means kung ligo ang cell wall di kayo mana ug mo collapse na ang cell wall mangunot yun ang imong atsal or kamatis pero ang dili ila nga naay sakto gyud nga fertilize ug boron or other ang mga micronutrient pa pa kayo kada bitong sinaw pa kayo murag pa mo unsa ba something like that no? so usa ra nang example soil type is very important also maintenance of quality during the production operation of course no proper care and management ang in rabakaron is towards ganibang what we call as safe agriculture practice now safe agriculture practice that means to say judicious ang paggamit sa mga chemicals no di, di yun nga not necessarily organic because uh, it, it's not really organic but kwan lang safe lang use of chemicals and fertilizer di kay Mabaligya ka huwag ba, mag-spray ka karon ron. Ano sa mahilo ng imong customer, di na napalit ni mo. No? So that is one production content which we can amply control. Pwede na nato i-control sa ato nga end. No? So another factor that we have is weather condition. You can see, nag-lads na ng rice because gibagyo. Kung sa pami mong harvest nga, <coughs> ang tanan ng mga panikol na humol mas tubig. Wat yung ka. So, Mana, very strategic juga mo mo tanong. So, kana siya. Then, papaya. You can also plant papaya in a very strategic location nga. Wa po yung RSV, PRSV, papaya ring spot virus nga. Destructive kena sa papaya. And incidentally, wa na sa ato. Na? 
So with that, we have also other like marketing problems and like quality requirement problems. Now, another situation in the I know in the uh, farm sector is uh, the the market linkaging and strengthening of market linkage. Important in the farm sector, no. And then small and medium commercial farmer production alliances clustering yun para ma improve ang uh, our way of managing the marketing problems and production problems. And then with that, these are some strategies. You go over the this lecture and you will have uh, to I know to maybe if there's something you need clarification, you go to my you go to our chat group and we will deal with that um, uh, amply or. Uh, promptly. You know? So thank you and have a good day. I'll, I'll see you in, in our chat group.